This is somebody else's wave. And they're so pretty, they glisten. I check the forecast, you know, once or twice a day, just so I can plan my electricity use. Come back, Judy. So most of the furniture, appliances, I've either gotten free, people were getting rid of it, or I purchased at secondhand stores. Then I got the opportunity to have an altar in my home, which then puts light into the whole neighborhood. I must say, it uh, it's a jaw dropper when I tell people I'm off the grid about a mile from the Capitol. <laughs> you know, it's like, Really? <laughs> Energy is probably the biggest factor in why the environment is getting all messed up. I've had to get way more involved in energy management than I ever anticipated. So now I'm checking voltage again. I have two systems, the Outback and the Magnum, which is over there. Here. This one shows what I'm consuming, here. and down here shows what I'm generating. 1.6 kilowatts at the moment. And the voltage is 53.4 there, 52.8 here. If I get too close to 54, I need to turn something on that consumes a lot of power, which would be the heater. Which just goes to show you, heating your house with electric resistance, oh my God, that is just insane as far as how much power it consumes. So these are the batteries that run the house most of the time when everything is cool. <laughs> they have um, a, a limited range of voltages that they like, so that's why I'm so careful. And they're, you know, a couple grand each, so <laughs> that's another reason I'm so careful. Well, no, actually, I need to run upstairs, turn on the heater, because the 54.1 volt, and the system will shut down shortly. Just for So, okay, we could start this. So, large, delicate, where it's close out this fast. And then a nice biodegradable detergent. The tricky parts is filling them and getting them out. It's a good workout. So I have to brace with my left arm and then pull it out with my right. So there's only maybe an inch or two of water left in there. So once I use this in the garden or the toilet, it, for a few days anyway, it won't smell too bad down here. <laughs> when you wash anything, it's amazing the water gets gray and there's not much salt in it. So this has been, well, some of this has been sitting for two weeks. If you don't empty it, it, whew, but the plants will really like it. So you start low. A lot of activities go on in the kitchen. 
food preservation, cooking, anyway, uh, water purification, uh, sorting. I came from a large family, seven children. <laughs> I'm the oldest. I would help my mother cook. We weren't allowed to snack between meals, but at least I could lick my fingers, lick the bowl, <laughs> sample a little something. But we always ate the same things. So when I went away to college, I couldn't believe how many other foods there were. Cooking off the grid is not that different from regular cooking if you have a gas stove, which I do. A lot of the newer gas stoves are um, ignited electrically. Thankfully, mine isn't. Oh, well, you waste gas. But not if you use it. So I have a pilot light here that's under this pot. And under this pot is another pot full of water. So this I use for washing the dishes. There's another pilot light that's in a deep cooking well. This is a really old stove, Chambers. The well is about as big, a little deeper than this pot. And mostly it's got rocks in it, especially in the winter, because hot rocks are really nice when you get into a cold bed. <laughs> and it'll stay warm for a few hours you know, long enough. And the, the rock is about, yeah, 110, 115. Here's another one. This one's a little prettier. <laughs> what do I cook? It does have an oven. It does have frying capabilities, but mostly I boil occasionally, pan fry. So one of the things I make pretty much every day, except the hottest part of the summer, is bone broth. And so in this particular case, I used feet and uh, chicken feet, which has a lot of collagen. And at my age, collagen comes in really handy. So, you know, it, it pretty well disintegrates. And then I just throw vegetables, spices, you know, it, more water, and I just keep it going. That saves a lot of energy. Water is really important. And it's really dirty. This is a reverse osmosis machine by a company called AquaTrue. And it's been pretty good. And it doesn't take much current to run it. So I especially like that part on a cloudy day. Um, and I keep a stash under this table here, which fits really nicely. And um, I've had a bunch of juices from Trader Joe's that just happen to fit perfectly under my table. What do you do with your kombucha? Well, I make it myself. It saves a lot of containers. I reuse them. And uh, it's really pretty easy. I put, I bring the water to a boil, uh, throw in the tea. I've been doing rooibos tea lately to avoid the caffeine, but regular tea works great too. Either alcohol or vinegar is a good preservative. So sometimes fruit is right on the edge, and if you don't eat it today, it's going to go bad. Well, if you put it in kombucha, it will the, the liquid will absorb some of the fruit flavor, and the and some of the alcohol and vinegar will go into the fruit. It won't mold. You'll have a nice flavor kombucha. It won't be garbage. Yay! Off the grid, why would I do that? Well, <laughs> smart meters are required in Washington, D.C. My meter was indoors, which was kind of a pain for the utility company. Uh, the meters sometimes start fires. And if a fire starts indoors, it, the chances of it taking out everything are a lot higher than if it starts on the outside of a brick wall. So I looked into whether I could have the meter moved. And that would have cost about 20 grand, plus they would have had to dig up the nectarine tree out front, which had been here for about 20 years. So I thought, I already have some solar panels, so I think I'll just go off the grid. In this 
spiritual group I belonged to. Many years ago, I was given the role of farm coordinator. I didn't know anything about farming, but I did know about gardening. So, this is an invasive species, but it's good. <laughs> Balance, beauty, nature, feeding myself, flowers for the altar, flowers for the bees. So I try and have something in bloom all the time, as much as possible. I hadn't really been involved in any way in the work of John Lewis, but I became curious when this popped up around the corner from me about a year or two ago. And then recently I saw a little documentary about his life and I love the concept of good trouble, and I feel like, uh, at least on a very small scale, that that's kind of what I've done with my electricity. I'm just trying to make things more environmentally friendly, more sane, more people friendly, more fair, more spiritual, really. <laughs>